drowning in a sea of paperwork? Do you have documents coming out of your ears? Can you quickly find the contents of a file? Are they missing? Well, I get questions quite frequently from subscribers and one of the questions that I receive more than once is what do you recommend for our company, for our business as a good solution for just managing and taking control of the documents that we use? And I got to tell you, I'm a, uh, I have the Microsoft Action Pack subscription, so I run Windows 2003 Server here in our office, and I use Windows SharePoint Services. And just to kind of clear up what that is, Windows SharePoint Services, you can almost think of it as uh, an, a, really a, a platform, if you will, for doing things for your company such as managing documents, um, creating an intranet in your company that may have things like uh, a shared calendar, a discussion, a place to hold discussions. Uh, you can maybe have your own small type of help desk. It's kind of like your own internal community site, uh, but on steroids to the fact that you can save uh, and uh, save and edit and revise documents uh, using that in Microsoft Office. You can actually publish, you can actually treat it as a document server. So why I like SharePoint services, I mean it's got a big brother, Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007 and SharePoint services is kind of like the engine to that car. Okay, uh, uh, the SharePoint server is the car but with things like a GPS and flat panel TVs inside the car and all that and that's what you're paying for for the the server side of it okay so this is what I use now I did have to go and download and install the Adobe uh, iFilter and I have to make a couple tweaks to the Windows registry on the server in order for it to crawl PDF documents but at the end of the day, you create what's called document libraries in SharePoint services, and you can grant permission to access those uh, libraries to various users and groups. Uh, they can in turn uh, revise those documents and control and keep track of who's making changes to what documents. And, and this works with uh, Microsoft Office documents, you know, Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, Word documents, all that sort of thing. And then also, as I said, PDF documents can be uh, crawled and also uh, become searchable using the free Adobe search folder. Now, uh, SharePoint Services is absolutely free. And you get it in a couple ways. You can, uh, you can download it. Uh, there is a piece of software called uh, Search Server 2008 Express, which has SharePoint Services built in. Uh, and I just want to talk a little bit about it course again the price you can't beat it it's absolutely free uh, if you buy Microsoft Office SharePoint server it's about forty five hundred dollars for the server and then it's about a hundred bucks a piece per user uh, thereafter but there's something you should know about and one of it comes with a very special type of SQL Server Express that unlike the normal free MSDE or SQL Server Express uh, limits you to a four gigabyte database uh, that is not the case. In fact, it's called the Windows Internal Database. Uh, but essentially, that's what it is. So you don't really have to worry about, you know, it's growing. Now you got two types of install. What's called a basic install and advanced install. I did a basic install of Windows SharePoint Services. Um, you do have to uh, in, uh, make sure the IIS server is running on your server. Uh, that you have the SMTP service started and common files are supported. Uh, you also need to install .NET uh, 3.0 and ASP not, uh, ASP.NET uh, 2.0. Those need to be enabled. Uh, make sure you go and grab, before you really start adding content, you want to kind of think through how you're going to set up SharePoint services. So you want to make sure that the users, permissions, groups, all that is configured. Whatever document libraries you're going to need, uh, for example, in my company I have a document library for clients, I have one for vendors, I have one for products. Um, uh, that we're working on. Uh, so those are some of the document libraries. Uh, and then, as I said, we got the iFilter from Adobe, which is a free downloader uh, download. We had to do a couple little registry hacks, so to speak. 
Uh, and then we just simply started copying files over. If you have uh, Internet Explorer, you can do what's called an Explorer view, and you can actually just grab bunches of documents and move them over. Or you can, uh, within uh, Windows SharePoint services, you can tell it to upload multiple documents. Now, another cool feature is your ability to connect uh, a SharePoint uh, document library or a site to Microsoft Outlook, including and as well as a calendar. Uh, so those uh, files can be uh, uh, available to you offline as well as online. They can stay in synchronization with one another. Uh, also, you can do the same thing with the uh, calendar. Um, one of the things that I do is when I got the original Office 2007 Enterprise, there was not an ability to automatically save as a PDF. You had to go get a, a special add-on from Microsoft. But now I believe through a service pack or an update, that, that's just part of it now. So typically, if I know if it's a document I'm not going to need to edit or have other people revise, I'll just save it as a PDF. If not, we have a, a, a decent uh, a flatbed scanner with a paper tray, and we'll scan documents, convert them to PDFs on a, a share folder and the network, and then we'll ultimately import those into SharePoint where they're searchable uh, very, very quickly. The, uh, the, the uh, Office uh, or the Microsoft Search Server 2000 Express, this adds uh, what the, uh, Microsoft describes as a, uh, as a enterprise level search and uh, includes the ability not only to search within the documents within SharePoint, but can also uh, search for hits as well on sites like Google and Yahoo and so forth. So it's more robust. Am I advising one of the other? Well, for me, the Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 uh, using the Adobe uh, uh, iFilter really did the trick for us. Uh, it's absolutely free of cost. Well, that's, you know, that's a qualified word. You have to have uh, Microsoft Server 2003, 2008 in order to, uh, to uh, uh, be within licensing agreement of the software. But other than that, uh, that, if you already have it, then you have got the very basic a very nice document management system in and of itself. And if you want to upgrade to more bells and whistles, then you'll want to look at the Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully that answers your questions. I love uh, SharePoint services. Uh, it's relatively easy to use, and that's uh, that's saying something. It's, it's not that hard, but I tell you, if you don't sit and put some forethought into it, it's really easy to get it totally screwed up. So put some thought into how you're going to organize your company, uh, what team site, you know, what sites you're going to need, what document library. Spend a little bit of time learning the software before you start importing lots and lots of documents into it. But it's got a great search feature, and you can, uh, you can keep track of who's working on documents, what revisions are out there, what's been checked out, what's been checked in, all of that uh, within SharePoint services. You don't need to purchase the SQL server in order to make it run. The one that comes with it will do you just fine. But, of course, you can uh, run it uh, actually within the SQL Server environment as well. Listen, I'm Bruce Naylor of Frugal Tech. And remember that uh, come to our website, Frugal Brothers, that's F-R-U-G-A-L Brothers, uh, F -R -U -G -A -L Brothers com. On uh, June the 30th, we're giving away an Apple uh, iPod Nano. It's the 4 gigabit, uh, uh, 4 gigabyte. Boy, I can't talk tonight. A four gigabyte edition. We'd love to have you there. All you got to do to win is two things. One, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And two, be present in our live chat room. So at frugalbrothers.com, go to the homepage, click the link that says Frugal Tech Live. Hey, we're uh, webcasting every day, work weekday from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll talk to you later.